and I will kill you with my kitchen knife. So today I'm going to be doing a series review of The Assassin's Curse Duology by Cassandra Rose Clark. We have The Assassin's Curse and The Pirate's Wish, and apparently there is another book that's set in this world, but not really part of the series, so I'll definitely be getting that book at some point because, spoiler alert, I loved these! I will be keeping this review completely spoiler free so you don't have to worry about any of that. Also a heads up, I had a lot of trouble trying to figure out the correct pronunciations for most of the names in this book, so if I mispronounce any of them, I apologize. Alright, so our main character, Anana, is a pirate. She's got a pirate family and everything, and her parents are trying to marry her off to another pirate clan, and she is not happy with that, so she decides to run away. However, the family of the person she was supposed to marry sends an assassin after her. To try and kill her. And so during a confrontation with the assassin, Anana accidentally activates a curse and instead of killing her, the assassin is bound to protect her. If the fact that these books have pirates and assassins doesn't sell you, I'm, I, I actually don't understand. I do not understand. That is like my OTP of fictional characters together. Pirates and assassins, like, yes, it's magical. So Anana, the pirate. I loved the fact that even on land, her pirateness, her background and upbringing really managed to shine through. It really is a part of who she is, but I just love her character as well. She's really strong-willed, but she's also quite sassy and snarky, and she's very blunt in what she says. She can be a feisty little thing, and that really made for some <laughs> hilarious situations. But then we also have the assassin. I think his name is Naji. Naji? however you pronounce it. I loved him as well, he's so mysterious and he's quite sarcastic as well, so having that sarcasm and that snark together, just the dialogue was perfect. I, it just, I lolled hardcore. I ruffled. But I also really love the fact that both of these characters developed so much, not only in the first book, but across the whole series. They both learned so many different things and their dynamic as well was really interesting to watch because obviously this assassin was trying to kill this pirate, so there's a lot of harsh feelings there. Not much love, but it definitely progressed. And in terms of the romance in this book, it was a really really nice, slow, burning romance. There was no, no insta-love at all. At all. It was a slow progression and nothing really picked up until book two, which was so nice to see because the focus in book one especially was more so on the adventure and the journey these two characters go on. In terms of the plot, I thought this story was really, really unique. It was not what I expected it to be. There were so many twists and turns, I did not find this book predictable at all. I loved the magical elements and the mythical creatures we see. And overall, I thought the pacing for both of these books was a nice brisk pace. There was balance between those action-packed scenes and those periods focused more on journeys. So it definitely kept me flicking those pages. I was through both of these books within two days for the Booktubeathon and I'm so glad that I picked these up. I'm so glad I did. If you guys followed my Goodreads statuses while reading these books, I think especially the second book, there was a lot of going back and forth between just cacking up, laughing over the hilarity going on, and then a few pages later, just like utter heartbreak. These books did bring me to tears and I just felt so connected with the characters and the story and what was happening. The only real criticism I had is there was uh, one of the resolutions that kind of links to the curse. It just seemed the the scene and the setting seemed really out of place to me. It just, the atmosphere of it and the kind of vibe I got it was so different from the rest of the book. It seemed kind of cheesy in a sense and a little too easy, too easily resolved. So I thought that that little segment was a bit eh, bit eh. I wasn't a huge fan of it, but overall the whole series came to a nice close. It resolved really nicely. I added these books on my wish list when I heard Assassins and Pirates and that was it. I didn't know to know any more. I was sold. And I'm so glad that this series lived up to my expectations. I'm just, I'm really happy with it. Just the giddy feels. The giddy feels. There were plenty of other feels in that book, but overall just, yes. 
so I'm satisfied. So for a star rating, I gave the Assassin's Curse five stars, and because of that weird part in the Pirate's Wish, I gave it four and a half, but overall, just like a wonderful series. If you guys are interested in picking these books up, I've left a link down below to the book depository through my affiliate link. If you'd like to help support me, feel free to click there, but if any of you guys have read these books, feel free to leave your thoughts and opinions down below. I'm interested to see what you guys think, and yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. I will be back very soon with... I think a book haul maybe. I am going away with my boyfriend for a few days and I'm bringing my camera. I'm going to try and get him to sit down and film with me. He's a tricky one to get in front of a camera, even for a photo. If there's anything you'd like to see us film, I've got a couple of videos in mind, but anything you particularly would like to see us do, then leave your suggestions down below. Anyway, that is all. I will see you guys next time. Bye.